In this demonstration, you're going to see me use Windows Admin Center to deploy a on-prem instance of Azure Kubernetes services. This Windows Admin Center gateway has already been configured and connected to an Azure subscription, and the extension for Azure Kubernetes service has been installed on this Windows Admin Center gateway computer. Okay, so we start connected to the server that's going to host our AKS instance. We scroll down and we select Azure Kubernetes service. We scroll down again and we click setup. So it gives us our prerequisites. It gives us information about our network. Now I've already got a DHCP server installed and configured here. So it asks for the password for the local cluster. It checks the configuration of the cluster and it says, okay, I need to make four changes to get this to work. I click apply, it goes out and makes those changes using the credentials I've just put in. The next thing that happens is that we need to enable cred SSP. And once we've done that, we can then go through and configure how networking is going to work. So we specify which network adapter is going to be used, which folder is going to store our VM images. And here we're saying that we're going to use the DHCP server that's here for IP address allocation. And when we do that, all we need to do is set up our load balancer settings. So I specify an IP address range that's within that DHCP scope. Once I've done all of that, I need to register the AKS cluster with my Azure subscription. So I'm logged in with an account that's got the appropriate permissions. I create a new resource group to host the registration information. I specify the region. At the moment, Southeast Asia is one of the few regions that'll actually support this. I click Next. It then gives me an overview of the changes it's going to make and my Azure registration. I click Apply. It goes up to Azure and it begins that configuration. So it creates the necessary resource group. It performs the registration and goes and puts all of the necessary artifacts in place that allow this particular on-prem server to run AKS. Once that's done, we need to come back and create the cluster. Now, in this case, it took me 13 minutes, but I've had this take 45 minutes. So you've got to keep that window open in Windows Admin Center until this process is complete. So walk away, get a cup of coffee, whatever. So setup's complete, I click Finish. It then reloads and it says, okay, you've got AKS running. So once we've got AKS running, what we're going to do is we're going to add a cluster. So I click Add Cluster and we're going to create a Kubernetes cluster. So again, it'll give me my system requirements. I click on Basics. Now I can choose to connect it to Azure Arc if I want. I then need to go and specify my subscription information, create a new resource group to allow all of those registration artifacts to be placed in my Azure subscription. And again, I'm dropping it in Southeast Asia because that's one of the regions that supports this. Then I configure my cluster details. So I'll put in a password for the local admin account. I give the cluster a name. I call it Thy Workload Cluster. It validates that that name doesn't exist in my subscription. I look at my primary pull node and it specifies the properties of the load balancer it's going to use. Then I create a node pool. So the first node pool I'm going to create here is called Linux Pool 1. I specify a size for the pool and then I specify the number of nodes. In this case, I'm just creating one node because this is a demonstration cluster. I'm going to add a second node pool. This is going to be a Windows pool for Windows containers. So again, I specify the node size. I specify the node count here. I'm going to add one node. On the authentication page, I'm just saying, don't worry about authentication. This is a test deployment. So I disable Active Directory authentication. It reviews my network configuration and then I click create. It goes and starts creating the cluster. I come back 15 minutes later and the cluster is created. So I click finish. It then performs an inventory and it'll show me on this page, my currently active clusters. And you can see I've got two, my workload cluster and thy workload cluster. We can see that they're both in a healthy state and I can select one of them and I can download the cluster kube config if I want. So in that demonstration, you saw me use Windows Admin Center to deploy a on-prem instance of Azure Kubernetes services.